Welcome to the Time Well Spent series, powered by AIB Merchant Services. In this series, we will tell the stories of business leaders who understand that the customer's transaction experience is as vital and equally seamless and premium as the experience in store. In our first episode, we meet Anthony Gallagher, founder and CEO of PetStop. We found out from Anthony how it all began, how he grew PetStop to be a market leader, and how payments technology is playing its part in shaping the future of his business. It's a fantastic industry. We're very lucky. Who doesn't love to see new puppies coming into the store and frolicking around and wagging their tail? It's great. Hi, I'm Anthony Gallagher. I founded Pet Stop in 1995. I had originally started my career working in pennies, worked my way up to become a trainee manager and then opening new stores for them. So I'd learned about retailing from them. It was a very customer focused uh, business, looked after the customer and they look after you. I mean, that was it. You know, Arthur Ryan, the chairman and founder of pennies, you know, had a rule like if there's more than two people at a till you opened another one, and they also had a no quibble money back guarantee. You know, 35 years ago, that wasn't a thing. When I left Penny's, I was doing some consulting work, and one of the companies I worked for was Quaker Oats, and they were the second biggest pet food company in the world, so I learned about pet food. I thought there was a gap in the market for, you know, a big format store, and I decided, why don't I use modern retailing techniques in the pet industry? So Pet Stop was founded. You know, 28 years later, I'm still here, so something must have worked. In Pet Stop, since I started it, it's always been about putting the customer first. Our mantra is happy pets, happy people. So it's really putting the pets first. They can't talk, so we got to do the job for them. The humans are just doing the delivery. That's it, you know, that's what they're doing. And at the end of the day, if we're not selling products and services that enhance the quality of pets' lives, then we're not doing our job right. That's who we're here to serve. I wake up every day and I'm, I'm a happy man. I really am. I work with great people. I really do. I mean, the people I work with are fantastic. And we've made lots of mistakes along the way, but we've picked ourselves up. When you're on a journey like this, it's about resilience, you know what I mean? It's, it's never, you know, roses every day. There's lots of days where things don't go right, and years when things don't go right. Our online business pre the pandemic was about 10% of our sales, give or take. It's now between 25 and 30% of our sales. Uh, so there's been a massive shift. My daughter, Marcella, was living in Taiwan at the time. And in early January, she said to me, Dad, there's something happening in Wuhan. And I've been told that the Chinese factories will not be opening after Chinese New Year. She said, so if I were you, get whatever stock in you can now because there's going to be a shortage later on in the year. So I said, OK. So we did. Any stuff that was due out of China, we got out. And then we just bought as much stock as we could from European distributors, so we sucked up as much stock as we could. And I think my staff thought it was mad because we, our warehouse was completely jammed. You couldn't get down the aisles. It was absolutely chaos. When Leo Radiger came on and said, right, you know, effectively everything is closing down, everything just took off. I mean, the online business, we went from having 100 orders a day to 1,000 orders a day to 2,000 orders a day overnight. And we were blessed that we had stock and we were even more blessed that we had the people to fulfill it because all of the staff, all of them, just got you know, their shoulder to the wheel and got stuck in. They worked from you know, six in the morning until three in the morning, you know, two shifts. You know, our stores weren't as busy, so we took managers, assistant managers, um, other colleagues from accounts from everywhere just got stuck in and we packed the orders. I mean, we had a reasonable online system. We had the basic methodology to deal with it, but not to ramp up as quickly as that. But we did. It was very difficult at times, but you know, the plan was at the end of each day, we tried to complete all the orders that were in that day and get them out to the customers. And, and by and large, we did do that. Having a vision, having a team that you can surround yourself with that will 
share that vision with you and then having the resilience to see it through. When things are bad, you know, you gotta sort of say, okay, well, this is an opportunity, let's move forward. One of our big achievements for the staff was that we won store of the year, you know, national store of the year against, you know, the likes of Brown Thomas and Woody's and Harvey Norman, etc. We're selling pig's ears and they're selling silk purses. It's unreal, really, and, and, and that's all the design, everything to do with the stores, it's all done by our staff. It's all people just sitting around, having a cup of tea, discussing how can we make things better. With the whole omni-channel offering, online and offline, it has allowed us to get closer to customers and understand our customers' needs better because we have a lot more data on them than we did before. You can have the best technology, but unless you use it and use the data, it's really of no use whatsoever. Um, and that's why AB Merchant Services, with the data that they provide us with, you know, it's, it's incredibly useful. AB Merchant Services will listen to you and take on board and try and, you know, if it's a good idea, they will run with it. That's the partner you want, you know. We're a small business, um, but we do want our, our, you know, our partners are with us on the journey, and that's very important.